Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be continuing my look at the recent Spider-Man themed Marvel Legends wave from Hasbro, and I'm going to be focusing on one of the key villains in this set, which is Jack-O-Lantern. And I think Jack o Lantern's a really interesting character. He's not one who gets a lot of love in the pages of Spider Man. He hasn't had a great many appearances. But I have to say, I really, really love his costume design. I love that pumpkin head, and I think there's something really evocative and interesting about him. And it's great to have a classic interpretation in the line. But as ever, let's start off by taking a look at the packaging, and of course, you know my feelings on this. This is the nostalgic baiting <laughs> 90s uh, Toy Biz uh, packaging design that we saw back in the 90s. I love this. I think it's really evocative. Of course, it's very closely tied to the animated series, as that toy line was. Uh, I just love the colours. I love the purples and the, the oranges and the, the yellows, and I just think everything about this just it, it takes me back to my childhood. I love this. I think this is a classic design. I think it's really displayable. I love that we have this updated image here in the keeping and style of that packaging with, with the image of Jack-O-Lantern on the billboard there. As many of you, I'm sure, will be aware, this character never made an appearance in the animated series, so I'm not quite sure how he warrants being on this card. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> I'm willing to go with it. It's still very cool and very attractive. And if you're so inclined, there is actually a peg on this, so you can hang this up on your wall, and it makes a pretty neat display. Then if we flip it and look at the reverse of the packaging, we have that image from the front there enlarged slightly, which is quite striking. The rest of it is really given over to small print, which isn't that impressive. And it's a shame that we don't have the other figures pictured here in this wave, because that would have been quite cool. And we've seen that done in previous waves. So it's disappointing we don't have that. But otherwise, eh, this is still fine. It's not something you're really going to want to display particularly, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a nice attempt. I won't lie, I had high hopes for this figure, so upon opening it up, I was really, really pleased with the results at first glance. I love some of the colorization on this figure, and I think he has a really amazing visual all in all. Now, it's worth noting that this is not the first classic Jack-O-Lantern we've actually had from Marvel Legends. Although it wasn't on a Marvel Legends card, it was from an Amazing Spider-Man card. It's still very much of the time of the Toy Biz Marvel Legends line. Uh, and so I've always had this in my collection, it's sort of representing Jack-O-Lantern. Um, this line could be a little bit gimmicky. It had some action features. And unfortunately, Jack-O-Lantern was a victim of this. He had firing pumpkin bombs and his arm was on a bit of a lever as well, which meant it was a little bit restricted. Um, um, you had to push this button so it, it would chop up and down uh, to give that throwing effect. Um, it, it was fine. I always quite liked the overall look of the figure, um, but I think we can safely say it has now been surpassed. If we take a look at this head sculpt, I think we can say that Hasbro have massively improved upon the original. Uh, I really like this. I like how we got the translucent plastic. So if you shine a light behind that, it does glow and create that sort of fiery glow, which is great. But the actual sculpt of the pumpkin itself is very nicely done. It actually has a bit of an expression on his face, has a bit more menacing, a bit more uh, snarky looking, which is great. And uh, there's actually some nice paint washes running through this as well to give it a bit more depth and texture and make it feel a bit more realistic. Uh, so I think they've done a phenomenal job of this. I'm really, really very, very happy with it. And then if we look at the body, we can see that they've reused several parts that we've seen on other Marvel Legends figures across the years, and that's absolutely fine because uh, I don't think there's any need to do anything particularly unique with this character. I do really like the scale mail they've gone for here, uh, and the arms and the gloves and the gauntlets. That all feels perfectly appropriate. But what's really impressive is the scale mail because there's actually a metallic sheen to the colouring, which catches the light beautifully and just adds a lot more depth and texture to it. We can even see a little bit of a black wash running through this as well in places a little bit of shading which again just gives it a lot more depth uh, which is fantastic it makes it look more realistic and authentic and I think this looks really phenomenal actually and it shows how just using the right materials and the right the right paint apps make all the difference with these figures now there's not a lot else going on the figure in terms of paint apps you don't see anything on the arms the gloves the boots or the legs which is a shame but he does have a really cool belt and we can see that he's obviously got some of those pumpkin bombs or type of bombs anyway, uh, actually fitted to that belt. So I think this is new. I don't think we've seen this before in any other figures. I think this is unique to Jack-O-Lantern and it looks great. Clearly, when it comes to his boots, they have just recycled something we've seen on Captain America figures in the past, but that's absolutely fine. They're actually very, very sturdy. He has no problems balancing here, which is great, uh, as we've seen with some of the other figures in this wave. Looking at the articulation then, he does have a ball joint at the top of the neck there, allowing the head to rotate 360 degrees. There's a little bit of wobble room from side to side, and it can kind of wobble forwards and backwards, but there isn't a huge range of motion here. 
There is a butterfly wing joint though, which is fantastic. I love this, as you know. <laughs> There's also a ball joint in the shoulder there, a complementary bicep swivel, and a double pin at the elbow. There's also a pin at the wrist as well, allowing the hand to rotate all the way around, and of course, hinge forwards and backwards. There's a straight swivel at the waist, allowing that figure to spin all the way around, and this is complemented by an ab crunch as well, letting that figure bend forwards and backwards. A pretty healthy distance, there's some decent poses you can get out of this. Then there's a ball joint in the hips, allowing the legs to kick out to the side. There's the thigh swivel at the top there as well. The legs will kick forwards, they'll kick backwards. There's another double joint at the knee, and there's also a cut at the top of the boot there, where we see a straight swivel as well. Finally, we have the ankle rocker as well, so that foot will hinge forwards and backwards, and it'll also rock from side to side. This figure is also one of the better ones when it comes to accessories, because he comes with an additional pair of closed fists, an individual pumpkin bomb, and his glider. And there's actually two parts of this glider. There's the base, and then there's this nodule, which will create the full look as if it's spinning in the air. Or you can choose to have this removed and allow it to lie flat, because if you have the nodule on, it's not gonna stay still. As you can see, it's gonna wobble. You can't lie, you can't have the figure posed on the ground like this. If you're gonna use this, you're probably gonna have to have the figure suspended. But if you take the nodule off, it will lie flat, and it looks pretty striking. And as you can see here, he has no issues holding that pumpkin bomb, like it just fits so snugly into his grip, it's nice and tight, it doesn't fall out of his grip at all, and it looks really quite cool actually, it really can create some fun poses, making it look like he's about to really lob this, uh, which looks great. So I, I'm really delighted with this, I think this looks really cool. The other thing that's nice about this is that they've thought this through a little bit, and on his belt there's actually a nodule there that will allow you to peg uh, this pumpkin bomb to his belt, so you can actually have four uh, pumpkins on his belt there, uh, which look pretty cool, or you can be holding than it, which I really like that as an extra option and I think it's really, really fun. So all in all then, I'm really delighted to give this figure five stars. I think it is tremendous. I think it's really, really fun. I had high hopes for this character and this figure, really wanted a, a, a significant update to a classic jack-o'-lantern and this has surpassed my expectations. I think it looks absolutely glorious. I think it's really got some nice paint tabs, particularly on the, on the scale mail there. I think it's a great sculpt and the articulation's really well thought out and of course he's got some great accessories as well. There's not much more else I can ask for from a figure like this. They've really thought through every element of it to make him as, as impressive and as versatile as possible and I have to give them top marks. Uh, I couldn't ask for more. This is fantastic. Probably the best in this wave in my opinion. If you enjoyed this video please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.